Okay, so for this video, we are going to be taking a look at section 200.16, and it says the auditor should comply with relevant ethical requirements relating to financial statement audit engagement. And so this is a big responsibility because there are a lot of stakeholders um, who use the audit, and it's not only the company's management or the investors or maybe their bankers, but generally the public at large, as well as the reputation of the accounting standards and um, standard setters. And so fortunately, the AICPA has published a code of professional conduct that can be used um, to comply with these ethical requirements. And the auditor should also comply with other ethical requirements published by other regulators such as their state boards of accounting. And typically the audit firm's internal quality control policies should um, be structured in a way that pushes the firm and its members to acting ethically in all of its dealings. So let's go over to the AICPA's code of professional conduct. So we have here the AICPA's Code of Professional Conduct. So they first say here that the auditor should have um, a level of self-discipline above and beyond the requirements of laws and regulations. And this involves an unswerving commitment to honorable behavior um, to the public, to its clients, and to his colleagues. And this may even be at, um, by sacrificing personal advantage. And they've, they've boiled this down into five different principles. The first one is responsibilities. The second is the public interest. The third is integrity. The fourth is objectivity and independence, and the fifth is due care, and the final is scope and nature of services. So let's go through these one by one and get an idea of what they mean. So responsibilities is a um, re requirement for the auditor to exercise sensitive professional and moral judgments in all of his activities. And so these bo responsibilities boil down to um, a responsibility to the art of accounting, to maintaining the public's confidence, and carrying out professions special responsibilities for self-governance. And all of this should enhance the traditions and reputation of the profession. Um, so next we have the public interest. So this states that auditors should have an obligation to act in a way that will serve the public interest, honor the public trust, and demonstrate a commitment to professionalism. So this means that the auditor has a responsibility to the collective well-being of the community of people and institutions that the profession serves. And this might be its clients, um, credit grantors, governments, employers, investors, the business and financial community, or others who rely on the auditor to be objective and to have integrity. So next we have integrity, and this means that when making decisions, the auditor should do the thing that is right and just. It also means that he should be honest and candid, and that he should not subordinate the public trust um, for his own personal gain and advantage. And so when making decisions, he should ask himself, am I doing what a person of integrity would do? Have I retained my integrity? And this also requires a member to observe the principles of objectivity and independence and of due care, which we uh, will discuss next. Now we have the objectivity and independence, and so this means he should maintain objectivity and be free of conflicts of interest in discharging his responsibilities. And this is not only an independence of fact, but also an independence of appearance. And in doing so, he should be impartial, intellectually honest, and free of conflicts of interest. Next we have due care, so this means that a member should observe, or an auditor, should observe the profession's technical and ethical standards. He should strive continually to improve competence and the quality of services and should discharge professional responsibility to the best of his ability. And this basically boils down to a quest for excellence. And the two components of this due care are competence and diligence. So this uh, competence means that the auditor should continually try to educate himself and gain experience and should continually strive for mastery of the work that he's doing in his profession. And this continues throughout his professional life. So by continually gaining this understanding and knowledge, he should be able to render services with uh, facility and acumen. And there also may be circumstances where um, his knowledge and experience may be limited in a particular area. And he should be humble enough to consult with more experienced people or to refer that service to someone who is competent in it. And also members should be diligent in discharging their responsibilities to clients, employers, and the public. This means that they should render those services promptly and carefully. Um, they should be thorough and they should observe applicable technical and ethical standards. And finally, we have the scope and nature of services. And so this says that the auditor should observe the principles of the code of professional conduct and determining the scope and nature of the services that he's going to provide. So this means when he is um, considering accepting an engagement, he should act, ask himself, would he be acting in the public interest? Would he be acting with integrity? Would he be able to be objective and independent? And would he be able to act with due care? And so if he is not able to meet each of these uh, requirements in relation to that engagement, um, he should not perform that activity. And some of the ways that he can accomplish um, each of these principles are to practice only in firms that have in place internal control procedures to ensure that services are competently delivered and adequately supervised. He should also only 
participating engagements where um, there's no conflict of interest in the performance of that activity. And he should only perform an activity that's consistent with his role as a professional.